Some people wanted to take the Gemini spacecraft all the way to the moon, including Pete Conrad, and he came sort of close on Gemini 11, and that's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. Alright, to say that Conrad got close to the moon on Gemini 11 is a huge stretch, but still, it's a pretty interesting story. Conrad joined NASA as one of the new nine, the second generation astronauts in 1962. At some point after joining the agency in the mid-1960s, he heard about these daring proposals to take Gemini all the way to the moon, and he was intrigued. He was so interested in this idea, he actually went to Congress to try to secure funding to take Gemini all the way to the moon, and as we know, he failed. Apollo just superseded everything. But even if he couldn't go to the moon, Conrad wanted to push the Gemini spacecraft a little bit further. After he served as pilot on Gemini 5, Conrad was assigned as commander of Gemini 11, and he wondered whether or not he and his pilot Dick Gordon couldn't use the Agena vehicle to push Gemini's orbit far higher than any spacecraft to that point had been. With the help of Bill Anders, Conrad proved that a high orbital Gemini mission wouldn't pose any greater risk in terms of radiation than any other mission. So he was given a go for a record altitude flight. Gemini 11 successfully launched during its two second launch window on September 12th of 1966, and Conrad and Gordon successfully docked with the Aegean target vehicle on their first orbit. Then the crew used the Aegean's propulsion system to boost Gemini 11's orbit to a peak altitude of 850 miles at apogee. That's four times further than the space station orbits. They even tried to generate a small amount of artificial gravity by tethering the Gemini to the Agena and spinning the two vehicles, but in such a small spacecraft they didn't really feel the effect. And as a point of interest, Dick Gordon once told me that he was so tired on that flight that during one of his EVAs he felt so relaxed he actually fell asleep. He then added that he cannot sleep in planes because he is not the one in the pilot seat. Some people have told me that Pete Conrad also fell asleep in that mission as well. So what do you guys think? If you were 850 miles above a beautifully curving Earth, would you be able to sleep in space? Let me know in the comments below, and of course leave your questions and ideas for future episodes in the comments as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space updates, and with new episodes every single Tuesday and Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.